what's up guys my name is Zach and today I'm driving a 1979 Mazda RX-7 up front is a 1.1 liter rotary engine down below is a four-speed manual transmission guys I'm so excited to be back in a first-gen RX-7 now I normally try not to come off on the channel as a know-it-all if you're unfamiliar with the channel but I have owned two of these first-gen RX-7s but never one quite like this so I know a fair bit about them like I said up front is a 1.1 liter 12a rotary engine now a rotary engine does not have any pistons at all it actually has these big Dorito looking triangles that work as the pistons that's what creates the power and they rotate instead of going up and down like I said, it is carbureted by a Nikki carburetor and makes about 101 horsepower and like, I don't know, like four torques or whatever. It's a rotary engine. They don't make great torque because there's only three rotating parts within the engine. Two rotors and an eccentric shaft. There is no valves. There's no cams. There's no gearing or, or anything like that. It's just two rotors and an eccentric shaft. That's it. And so it makes the car very buzzy very very fun to drive it redlines at 7,000 rpm which these days in the world of honda and nissan and all these things you know 7,000 rpm isn't that impressive anymore but in 1979 besides a motorcycle it was nearly unheard of to have such a high revving engine now one question that comes up with rotary engines a lot is the reliability because they have apex seals that tend to blow up when they don't get enough oil they kind of get a reputation for bad reliability and two things on that, for, actually three things on that. First of all, shut your mouth. Second of all, when properly oiled and maintained, these engines run forever and ever, especially the 12As. The 12As are the toughest rotaries ever built. They have the thickest apex seals. They're just well built. I blew up a 12A one time and then I drove it for 55 more miles. Blown up and it still started every time. What engine do you know about that does that? And third thing, is that this car helped rescue another Mazda today. This was the rescuer, not the rescuee. That's pretty big. The rotary engine is so smooth too. It's just so smooth and quiet and it just kind of goes about its day. Like I said, paired to it is a four speed manual transmission. That's right, you heard that correctly, four speed. It's a very rare option for the RX-7. The first two years, known as the SA, and I'll talk about that later on, the SA had a very rare option of a four-speed manual. So this is the first time I've seen a four-speed manual RX-7 before. Now, before the RX-7, there was the RX-2 and the RX-3, and those had four speeds minus the RX-3 SP, but RX-7s are most commonly five-speed. This is the four-speed. It's okay, it's kind of hard to shift. It's a very different transmission than the five speed. Gearing wise, it's actually very similar, but it feels very different. Like I said with the engine, there's not a whole lot of moving parts, so there's not a lot of torque, which means everything just slides together and works together in harmony. It's like trying to do a group project with four people as opposed to 110 people. You can never get a word in edgewise with that, but in an RX-7, you just got like four or five things working together, that's it. Last but not least, of course, the SA RX-7 is rear wheel drive. It has a solid rear axle with rear drum brakes. However, the later first gens did come with rear discs if that's something you would wanna seek out. So let's talk about the interior. Well, this interior lasted from 1979 until 1983, where in 1983 for the last two years of the first gen RX-7, they actually switched over to a different interior. So 84 and 85 is different. But in front of me, I have three main gauges. On the far left, I have my clock and coolant temperature, as well as fuel. Then in the center, I get a tachometer, prompting that 7,000 RPM red line, as well as a voltmeter. So when you just turn the key, it actually gives you a voltmeter for the engine, which is really, really nice. Then on the far right, I do have a speedometer with my odometer. On the steering wheel, I don't have anything except for the Mazda logo, and of course my horn. To the left of me, I have a choke. So because this is a carbureted 1.1 liter, I do actually have a manual choke. So on a cold start, you'll pull this choke out. It'll help the engine start. But the nice thing is that it actually does pull itself in once the engine is warm. It has a little magnet on the back and it sucks itself in when the engine's ready. Very, very nice. 
On the door, I just have my crank for my window and nothing else, which is nice for the SA. The FB, the later part of the first gen, they added this sort of pocket thing and it didn't give me a whole lot of leg room. I've only owned FBs, which were both 1985 RX-7s. So I'm used to having no leg room on the left. Coming into the center, I do have two vents. I have my air conditioning and heating options. Of course, air conditioning is just pretty much vent. And then I have the standard radio. The top radio, this is the standard SA RX-7 radio. Very, very 70s. The two dials and then an AM and FM in the middle. That's it. That's all you got. But down below that, I have some type of 90s upgraded radio. It is what it is. Then I have three interesting buttons. I do have a defroster button, which is atypical of what we normally consider the defroster button. It's a very interesting looking switch. Then I have the headlight up button. So this car does have pop-up headlights and I can just turn on the headlights by this one single switch. So if I wanted to wash them or really just wink or wave at someone, I can hit that switch right there and they go right up. Then I have my power antenna button and my cigarette lighter to the right. Then I have the shifter. The shifter is very, very tall. This is not the stock shift knob. However, the shifter is very tall. It's like this in all RX-7s. The SA does not actually get any cup holders. To my far right, I have what looks to be a speaker, although I don't believe that there's a speaker behind that sort of mesh. Not really sure what that's about. Now the seats are okay. They're decently comfortable. They don't really have much bolstering. The RX-7 at this point in its life, 1979 was the first model year offered of the RX-7, and it was still trying to find its way as a sports car. Before the RX-7, there was the RX-3 and the RX-2 and the RX-4. They had rotary engines and they were sporty, but they weren't dedicated true two-seater sports cars. This was the first two-seater sports car RX-7 that there was. And so the seats kind of reflect that because these seats feel like they're out of an RX-2 or an RX-3. They're very easy to get in and out of. They're decently comfortable, but I'm kind of flailing all over the place. They, they don't really hold me in too well. Later RX-7s got higher bolsters, stiffer, a lot more aggressive to kind of keep you in. But we don't have any back seats, but we do have the rear hatch and we'll talk about that right now. So around the back of the SA, what's interesting is that the lock for the rear hatch is actually off to the right here on the fb they moved it over to the middle so twist it and the glass will come up so this is the only glass part that comes up it's not a wraparound hatch but i mean the size is great the spare tire would be under here i do have two speakers in the back as well very basic but i mean it's just such a 70s look i mean look at that i love the hatch Love, love, love the hatch. Now we have to talk about the looks. I mean, it's perfect. It's a perfect, perfect car. It's perfectly proportioned. And this is the perfect color for an SA RX-7. This is by far the perfect color for an SA RX-7. When I buy my SA RX-7, it will be this color. And you know what? Who knows? Maybe I'll buy this SA RX-7. I sure would like to. One interesting thing about the exterior is that you'll see that there's a lack of a passenger side mirror. Now we've seen this on many cars before. The 81 Corolla didn't have a side mirror. It's just an 80s thing. They didn't really think that they were required. And since you don't really have any blind spots, you can just kind of head check real quick and you're fine. But from the factory, the 79 RX-7 did not come with a side mirror on the passenger side. It's so 70s with the big chunky bumpers. And let's talk about that. So the first two years of the RX-7 were known as the SA, 1979 and 1980. Then it's known as the FB, and I'll show a picture of my FB here. It has the more refined bumpers on it. It looks a little bit more 80s as opposed to 70s. The interiors, like I said, for 84 and 85 were swapped out. And actually, in 84 and 85, you could get a 13B, a 1.3 liter rotary, as opposed to this 1.1 liter. But I'll put a whole video at the end talking about the differences between the SA and FB. Go check that out if you're interested. But this, guys, this is the SA. This is the first RX-7. In 1979, the world didn't know what the RX-7 was. Now, the RX-7 has such a cult following. RX-7 Club, hell, my whole channel is first-gen RX-7 stuff. It's reviews and first-gen RX-7 stuff. And so this is the RX-7's genesis. This is page one. This is patient zero. And yeah, it's kind of sloppy. 
it's pretty slow. It's not as dialed in as the later generations, but it's getting there. It's on its way. It's very clear that in 1979, the RX-7 train left the station and it was set for a very, very long journey. A journey that I'm very happy to be a part of. I've owned three RX-7s. I've 13B swapped them. I've built them up, I've torn them down. I know all the nuts and bolts on these things and I love them. I really truly love them. There's just something about them. And this is my dream SA. Okay, my dream SA if it had plaid seats. Some of them came with plaid seats. This would be my dream. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge, humongous thank you to Jake for allowing me to take out his SA. This thing is beautiful. It only has 85,000 miles on it. What a gem. I mean, what just a beautiful, nearly museum piece of Mazda history this thing is. Just absolutely gorgeous. And thank you so much, Jake, for letting me take it out. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really like to. Take care, guys.